Since her graduation from Makerere University in 1989, Dr. Sisechitio Mutuluza has spent most of her life heavily engaged in clinical trials to answer research questions that should apply to policy and practice. Having graduated at a time when HIV AIDS was at its peak in Uganda and the country leading in HIV prevalence in the world, Dr. Chitio, a retained intern doctor at St. Francis Hospital in Zambia at the time, realized she had a calling in research to save a diminishing population to a disease that many knew little or nothing about. Her first study was a WHO-funded one to understand the behavior of HIV AIDS in infants, children and adolescents. As a medical doctor, you can branch out in many specialties. But for me, uh, getting, being part of that uh, just showed me that this is where my passion was and this is what I wanted to do. And I've never looked back. Chitio would later join the Joint Clinical Research Center, a newly established institution, to provide a scientific intervention to the HIV epidemic when patients were ignorantly relying on herbal concoctions to cure the disease but were still dying. At that time, the, it was a crisis and there were so many false claims. You remember even some people went to take soil from Masaka, that it was a cure. And then you would see a very sick patient and then the relatives and friends would collect money. At that time, there was Cameron in Kenya. They would give the money to someone, they would rush to Kenya, get Cameron and bring it back. It wasn't cheap. And usually in a space, in a short time span, you would lose that patient. The Cameron would still be there. And uh, the resources which could have been left for the children and the family were already used up. So it was sad uh, that we had nothing to offer people to remain active. This time holds the memories that Dr. Chitio would rather forget in her career. When we asked to work with the herbalists so that they prepare their, um, their herbal preparations at the institution so that we could know, they were very fearful that we will take their knowledge. When we found out that they didn't work, they went ahead to market their preparation like JCRC has even tested it so. And they were going to wards in Mulago which were full of HIV patients, people who were very desperate. The only known medication for HIV at that time was Dovudin, and Dr. Chitio was among the few doctors to push for the first funding from the US President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFA, to bring ARVs to low-income countries. 20 years on, PEPFA now treats 60% of people living with HIV in low- and middle-income countries. We were two case studies. One, the other one was in Haiti. And why it was important was because there had been a lot of debate. This cannot be done. And then they came and they saw that we were actually doing it and even doing tests to monitor the patients that were only thought feasible in high-income countries, it was like, okay, so it's possible. It was access for the region. And the drop in prices continued because we continued to negotiate. From a junior doctor at JCRC, Chitio would become a research coordinator and director of research and clinical services before she became a deputy ED in 2012 and executive director in 2017. This makes 31 years at the institution. I've been part of landmark studies that have changed policy and practice. And I continue to engage in research that is the frontier of science so that we get a cure for HIV. We are saying we should be developing preventive vaccines by our scientists. And this work should be done locally because the capacity is there. And if it is missing, it should be built here. Because whatever capacity you build, even for HIV vaccines, can be used for other vaccines of emerging infection. Even by looking at her cabinet of accolades, Dr. Chitio does not flinch from agreeing that she is a Wonder Woman who has had a fulfilling career in helping save life as the institution she's heading is currently doing many studies, including one on the use of injectable antiretroviral drugs to replace daily ARV tablets. I think 
many things are coming on board that are uh, including injectable antiretroviral drugs that we may not have to take as frequently every day. She's also hoping to start trials on gene therapy that can be used in sub-Saharan Africa to treat HIV. Gene therapy involves altering the genes inside the body cells of a patient in an effort to treat HIV AIDS. It's been successfully used on five patients in the world. And who knows, if you live long, live long enough because you're taking your drugs properly, we will get to a cure. We are optimistic we'll get there. She's one of the women being celebrated today, although still burdened by the fact that women and girls dominate the chart of HIV infections in Uganda and Sub-Saharan Africa due to social, cultural and economic factors that place them in vulnerable positions. We, the women, both older and also youth, are disadvantaged and this is where the infections are happening. So, um, our, my responsibility, but I don't work alone, I work with a team, I work with an institution, is how can we prevent this infection? Dr. Chitio's message for Women's Day is for everyone to try and avoid HIV and the government to address unemployment which has pushed many girls into practices that expose them to the virus. Edward Mhumza, NTV.